Hello everybody, Ollie here. It's been another fun month on the channel, so let's have a look at some of the comments you've been leaving. I did a video on whether politicians should be honest or electable, and Randy Ham says, are honesty and electability really mutually exclusive? And they talked about Bernie Sanders. And, and yeah, of course, that was the kind of central conceit of the, of the video, was that I was setting them up as being opposed, but, but hopefully they needn't necessarily be. Really, it was just an excuse to, uh, to examine what electability really means, a little bit of conceptual analysis there. But you're absolutely right. I mean, hopefully, at least, a politician could be both honest and electable. Jonathan Westerby absolutely totally saw through me and said, well, it's, it's kind of a false dichotomy that sets up the rest of the video. And yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I think that video, I think it sailed a little bit close to the wind in terms of how personal I get. I mean, I don't, I don't think I have a duty to keep my personal views off the channel or anything. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a YouTuber, I can make whatever kind of videos I want, but you guys don't have to watch them. But, uh, but I do think that one, it, it wasn't perfect. I don't think it was the best video I've ever made, uh, and I think in terms of the writing, it was just a bit sailing too close to the wind. Yeah, that was, it was a good video, I was happy with it, but uh, it wasn't my best, and that's fair enough. It proved a little bit controversial in another sense as well, because the Big Bad Wolf said that they really liked my background music, and uh, Richard McKean said that they liked the video and didn't like the background music. Yeah, the music, as you can probably tell if you've been watching the show for the last couple of weeks, is something that I'm playing around with at the moment, because part of winning YouTube Next Up, the national competition I won, was that I got a year's free subscription to a royalty-free music site, and they've got like all the music I could ever want, so I don't just have to survive on scraps and dregs of whatever I can scrounge up that's royalty-free from the internet anymore. I've got, I've got whole libraries of music. So it's something I'm playing around with and something I'm experimenting with and, and having fun with. So I'm, I'm glad that some people are liking the music and, and some people aren't, you know. I'm, I'm still experimenting with it and I'm always keen to hear what you think. Kazuya Mishima said that one thing we didn't talk about was charisma and that a politician might not be honest or what we thought meant was meant by electable, but they might be very charismatic and might be able to sell themselves anyway. And yeah, maybe that's an interesting point. I mean, I think like with electability, it's going to be difficult to say how charismatic somebody is because you're always going to be tempted to bring in what you think of their politics. So there's a there's a politician in the UK who's got a reputation as being a, a very good speaker. And he gave a speech a while ago and a lot of people were like, oh, oh, fantastic speech, well done, well done, well done. And whenever this guy opens his mouth, I'm like, this guy's not a charismatic speaker at all. He's a complete clown because I, I think that the stuff he says is just like demonstrably bollocks. So... I think that what you think of somebody's politics is going to affect not just whether you think they're electable, but probably even whether you think they're charismatic as well. Kreshiel says, how does it feel to be someone that looks good with short hair, long hair, bearded and without a beard? Well, I tell you what, if I ever meet anyone like that, I will ask them and let you know what they say. As a special thank you for sponsoring the show, Sean Emanian got to ask me one question that I would answer in front of all of you, and he chose to ask, uh, have you seen Star Trek before? And if you have, do you love it as much as I do? I've never seen the original series of Star Trek. I'm a TNG man. I'm TNG all the way. I've seen every episode all the way through. I introduced my girlfriend to Next Generation and she's mad about it as well now, or, you know, at least has the decency to pretend to be. Um, and I've seen the TNG movies too, which, to be honest, I, I enjoyed them more than probably anyone should have done. Gathius asks, is that the Necronomicon on the shelf behind you? <laughs> Yes, it is. So then I did a video called What Happens in a Philosopher's Brain, and we talked about System 1 and System 2 and different ways of thinking, some faster ways and some slower ways. And uh, Bridget Hansen says, this explains how people can be easily brainwashed and why people base a lot of their opinions on emotions instead of rationality. I, I just want to say you might need to be a little bit careful there because when Daniel Kahneman, the thinker we were talking about, describes System 1 and System 2, he's not talking about emotions versus rationality. Th that's a very old dichotomy it goes back even all the way to stoicism and and it's that dichotomy has been used to silence a lot of people and, and do a lot of sexist damage as well so it, emotions and rationality are not necessarily opposed you can be angry and passionate and still perfectly rational or like that politician that i mentioned you you can be not at all rational and have your argument completely based on emotions or sometimes you you might be overly rational and neglect an emotional dimension of something so I don't think they're necessarily opposed. There were a few people who had an absolutely fascinating discussion in the comments of that video about democracy and how how we can really design a democracy and have a functioning one that works well when we know that the brain can be so easily fooled by this. Uh, Giffica, Giffica? Giffica said, um, this is a, like a system based around people voting with their biases and their lack of knowledges. You don't have economists 
uh, voting on economic issues, farmers voting on farming issues, uh, lawyers voting on lawyer issues, uh, and, and so that uh, you get people who don't know what they're talking about voting, essentially. And that's an interesting way of looking at it. And, and I think um, Pharaoh, who replied to your comment, had an interesting comeback as well. They said, well, who checks if those experts are doing their job well? And how are you going to define who an expert is? And that's the kicker, isn't it? Because you can never be politically neutral. Like, if you asked me, uh, Ollie, I, I want you to put together a, a panel of philosophers who are going to advise the government. I'm quite a left-wing guy, so obviously I'm, I'm, I'm biased. Everyone is biased in some ways. Uh, so I'm going to put together a lot of left-wing philosophers, um, and also even even if you try and be like if you use the computer or something, if you were to select a group of philosophy professors to advise the government on say moral matters, you would have very few black and minority ethnic people on that committee just because there are so few black and minority ethnic philosophers in the UK. And Oren Ashkenazi said that there's no real way of escaping the problems that what we talked about throughout for democracy is like yeah. It's, it's a big problem, like human brains are flawed things, and so if you ask people to make big important decisions, they're gonna be vulnerable to that kind of, uh, to those kinds of mistakes. But I mean, one of the things that you could try and do is, is try educating people, I guess, that's always helpful. And uh, I guess diversity as well, we talked about different types of people having different biases and blind spots, so, so I guess coming together and educating people and making it a diverse education might be a, a way of improving things, although not necessarily a way out. I guess there's no way out of the problems with your own brain. <laughs> Max hangs out, says, I stayed here after discovering you were an atheist. I stayed here after discovering you were a leftist radical. Uh, but if you defend Dragon Ball GT, there's only so much I can take. Fair enough, I can't blame you, to be honest. My defense of Dragon Ball GT is far and away the most controversial thing I've said on this channel. That's you know, that's fair enough. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one, fine. <laughs> Those are all the comments I've got time to look at. Hey, this is the final video I'm gonna film in this set, in this house. I'm, I'm moving to London on Monday. This is the last video I'm gonna be filming here. I've built up quite a backlog from filming here, so you will see a lot more in this location, but chronologically, yeah, this is the last one, so... Sad times, I guess, moving to a new set. I'll have to build a new set. I'll let you know what it looks like. And thank you very much to all the fans who've been crowdfunding me and enabling me to get this new flat. Thanks especially to all the names you can see here who've been my big supporters this month. If you can't make a regular donation at Patreon, I now have a tip jar at paypal.me slash philosophytube. So think of that like me putting a hat round at the end of a, of a lecture, like anything you can chuck in that, some loose change or whatever would be really, really useful. Don't forget to subscribe as well. YouTube tells me like half of the people who watch the show aren't subscribed, and I'm like, why? So Patreon or PayPal if you really want to help me out, and I will see you in the next comment reply video in my new flat. See you then. Bye.